A very frequently asked question that I get is, how do I learn, like in the field, how do I learn, I, I can listen to the DVDs, I see the video clips, I've seen the Deer Society show, how do I put that into practice? And I learn a lot by practicing those vocalizations, watching deer's behavior, seeing the reactions I get, those will all be there for me in my little toolbox of calls that I use with the extinguisher, how I'm going to move the modest slide, where I'm going to move it to, how I'm going to cup it. Those changes of vocalizations, volume, depth, all of that needs to be practiced. And the only way you're going to practice is in real life by going out there and just doing it. This deer here walks into the frame and he actually responded to a, a rattling sequence from earlier and came flying up the hill, super aggressive, late in the season. Once this deer came up from the black rack calls out across the bottoms and up onto the ridge, I actually switched to the, the extinguisher and I was using the modest slide light, light tones because it's a younger deer and just simple contact grunts. And I'm just trying to get him to come more towards the base of my tree. He's already up here looking for a fight. And again, remember it's super windy out. It's very difficult for any animal, including humans, to pinpoint exactly where a sound's coming from on a really windy day. Contact grunts are very simple, but it's important to make sure that you're matching your output with the extinguisher call with the same age structure of the deer that you're trying to call in. So if it's a young deer, two, three years old, you're gonna run that up above where it says buck and below the doe, and you're just gonna blow lightly in it, short. If you wanna make a more deep, more guttural sound uh, as a contact grunt for a more mature whitetail, you're gonna run it all the way down to the bottom, and then you're gonna blow the exact same way, but cup a little bit more on the end of the call. In a scenario like there is on this farm where there's a lot of different habitats all kind of coming together, when a deer like this comes up and he's trying to pinpoint a call, he, he's seeing different depths of rooms that he's moving into. And, and because of that, he's looking for these deer that are fighting. He walks right by my tree and then goes on out into a food plot that has a cornfield that swings around alongside of it. As he goes past me, I tried grunting at him a few times. You can see his ears are pointed back at me, so he's still kind of acknowledging that somewhat, but He's still visually looking for that deer because he walked into a whole new environment. He walked into a wide open green field from the timber. So he's looking for a visual now. So I picked up my black racks and I smacked those together to let him know that the fight was actually behind him and he possibly walked by it. And that the clicking of the antlers is what got him to turn and spin and actually start swinging around again. Far and away for me, the most important item that I have in my pack, especially on windy days, are the black racks. The black racks have the ability to reach out further than any other call I've used, including real antlers. When they come together, I smash the top ends together first, which will carry the loudest sound or make the loudest popping sound that'll carry the furthest to attract attention. And then the clicking and the grinding that happens when you twist them together is what really convinces a deer that it's a real fight. So when you hold the black racks, make sure that you're holding them with your fingers down around the lower tines, not in the center of the racks. The tops come together first and the bottoms combine to click and pop and the grinding happens on the top. So it looks just like this. So the learning curve in this for me is you'll see me throw out some grunts and a variety of grunts along with the antlers. This deer seems almost 100% responsive when those black racks touch each other, but not so much a lot of the grunts. Every situation for every deer is going to require a different type of call or, you know, maybe switching from the black rack to the extinguisher. You, you just, sometimes you just don't know what scenario. And at this time of the year, deer are worked up, they've been rutting, they're running hard. Um, it's just going into the post rut. You never know what's going to work and so as you throw all these out just pay attention to what you're seeing and what you're learning because this will change daily on a daily basis for a whitetail. When you're learning with your black rack and your extinguisher you're going to go through some time periods where it gets really exciting like this almost three times you'd come within 10 yards but he was 
pretty much oblivious because of the stage that we were at in the rut. He was looking for those deer that were still fighting and didn't even acknowledge to him that there was danger in the tree. And he just kept cruising on by our stand and then down over the high wall. While we were learning a lot from the deer that we were interacting with and how he's responding to, especially the black racks, we knew that we were going to be focusing on those coming forward. What we didn't know is that our target buck had slipped in on us when we weren't paying much attention. The racks just flat out worked too good in this scenario and we weren't prepared. Although we learned a lot by communicating with that deer in a high wind scenario, we learned an even bigger lesson in that you need to stay on top of your game all the time. Anytime you're creating the illusion that there are bucks fighting or you're communicating, young deer, old deer, no matter what it is that you're doing, you invite other opportunities to come your way. And if you're not paying attention, you're not on top of your game, you can miss a great opportunity. Want to experience the same results you just witnessed? Use what the Deer Society experts use. The Extinguisher Deer Call and Black Rack Rattling System are the highest rated deer communication systems of all time. And less than 1% of deer hunters will have the opportunity to buy one this season. Get yours today at thedeersociety.com. Order now.